since I don't have a little clapper yet. So. Smart ass. <laughs> Short 
answer yes. Um, I've recently had to let go of certain parts of that dream. Um, wow, these these questions are. Uh, he's attacking me with things that I'm still working through. All right, I can appreciate that, I guess. Um, most of the dreams that are that intense, I tend to write out in some way, shape, or form. Um, the most recent reoccurring one would. Its embodiment is called the Diamond Tragedy, um, and technically that is going to be hitting the stage this year, but it's not necessarily as I dreamed it, um, but that's, I will be completely transparent and tell you that I am not going to go through that dream particularly, but the embodiment of it is still very alive and well. I don't know if that actually answered the question or not, but that's a... That's how it works. <laughs> I don't get interviewed very often, so it's very uncomfortable for me. I'm just going to go ahead and toss that out there. <laughs> You're doing absolutely fine. You're very kind. What is your greatest fear? My greatest fear would be probably the the feeling of it inadequacy. Um, that's a uh, that's not necessarily not being needed. Um, because I come from a background of being very independent and I know that I get irritated when other people aren't doing the basic things that, oh, I shouldn't say the basic things, things that I'm like, hey, this should be like, you know, um, normal. Um, fun fact, it's not always normal. I have to take into account that not everybody is me, and that is okay, and I am not everybody. Um, I definitely have shortcomings, for sure, but the fear of not being needed when I am actually needed, not being there for someone that actually needs me, and not knowing that they actually need me, um, because I'm clouded by that independence, that need for other people to be independent in certain aspects and not seeing through the independence to the pain. Do you have any irrational fears? Absolutely. Slamming my son's hand in the door. That is, a, I, I just have this concern that he is going to put his hand somewhere and I'm going to not pay attention and his hand is going to get stuck in like the car door. Um, it's not rational because he is like, he's competent. Like, like, hey, you should move your hand. Like, I think, I think it comes irrationally because I, at one point, had some anger issues when he was younger, and thankfully none of it ever got taken out on him. But, God forbid, like, I slam my door because I'm angry and his hand's in there. Like, there's no coming back from that. I'm just like, no, like, that's, so it's rationally irrational. Like, I don't think it'll ever happen, but that might be because I'm hyper aware. Also, going off of a bridge, um, that's kind of irrational. Um, like, driving off of a bridge, or just falling off of one, or... Like, a bridge collapsing, okay. whilst on it, like, what do I do in that situation? 
I don't think that my vehicle is properly prepared for that. Um, and it is slightly irrational because they, there are safety measures that get taken 90% of the time. Um, so there's that. Uh, maybe that's why I stopped watching certain movies. Because they just put irrational fear in your head. Ironically, sharks is not an irrational fear for me. I'm just like, oh, if it happens, well, huh, circle of life, it's fine. So I just, <laughs> like, I don't, <laughs> thinking about it, I'm just like, huh, that's, the, those would be probably the two main ones. Mostly, like, what happens if my son is in the car with me and we go over the bridge? Like, is he strong enough to get himself out of the car seat? Do I roll out my windows first? Do I roll out my windows after I get him out? Is he big enough to even make it to the surface if we do swim out? Like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of factors there. And I just stopped thinking about it, because it's irrational. I'm like, I'm sure we'll be fine. And if not, well, then it's not a problem anymore. So, there is, there is that. Okay. Do you remember the first kiss you ever had? Yes. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do remember the first kiss that I ever had. Do I want to go into detail about it? No. Do you remember the first time that you fell in love? Are we talking about legitimate love? Or, like, what we thought was love when we were younger? However you would class it. Um, to be completely honest, I question whether or not I've actually been in love. That's, love isn't what it is in the movies, and up until probably two years ago, I that's what I based my idea on it as. And as I get older, I'm just kind of like, hmm. Like, I do agree that love is a choice. But I don't... I don't think I've actually been there yet. I've been infatuated. I've been obsessed. But I don't know if I've actually ever been in love. Do you have any guilty pleasures? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Um, this is gonna sound real, real trivial. Um, so there's this, this show, this universe, um, The Vampire Diaries. It is, I would consider that a guilty pleasure because I know the toxicity that comes with it, but you just can't stop watching it. Like, there's just, For a very long time, it was one of my comfort shows. Then they took it off of Netflix, and I'm not, I'm not going to buy the DVD series because I don't have a DVD player. So that would be pointless. I've contemplated buying it on one of the streaming services. Uh, I can't remember what it's called right now. It's been so long since I've been on it. But that, that is an option. But I, that's a purchase that I cannot justify at this point in time. I'm not depressed enough anymore, I guess. I don't know. I'm doing better with my finances when I try. Which is always good. <laughs> do you know how to cook? And if so, what's your favorite dish to make? I do know how to cook. Um, and my favorite dish. I don't think that I have come across my absolute favorite dish yet, but I do love make. this is going to sound real weird. Um, I do love making hummus. Will not eat the stuff. Cannot stand hummus at all, like eating it wise, but making it, love making it for people. 
I, that's one of my first questions when I ask people. I'm like, hey, do you like hummus? Like, yeah, awesome, I'll make some for you. Oh, what's your favorite flavor? Don't like it. <laughs> I do not like it whatsoever, but I have spicy and regular. Like, which one would you prefer? Like, <laughs> uh, Also, hollow bread is fun to make. Um, yeah, hollow bread is, is, would be top tier as well. Oh. Is there anything basic or commonly done that you don't know how to do? driving your car or swimming like things that is mo- that a racist question <laughs> yes I know how to swim with my floaties on I, know. <laughs> I do know how to swim just so, we, so that's clear <laughs> um, something basic that If I don't know how to do it, I don't know that I don't know how to do it. Yeah, but I can probably just YouTube that. I don't... (laughs) I know the gist of how to put filters in. (laughs) Like, house filters? Okay. Um, I, I don't recall ever doing it. But, I mean, it can't be that hard. You just unscrew, change it out. My OCD ass would try and clean out all the dust that's in there. So there's that. Um, As far as... I don't know how to make deviled eggs. But that just takes a recipe. So, that's... I don't don't eat deviled eggs. Well, I don't eat hummus either, so... That's, that's not the reason. I don't know enough people that like deviled eggs, so I've never had a reason to make deviled eggs. For the most part, I feel like if I can just YouTube what I don't know how to do. So I, that's, I feel like I'm talking a lot. You're doing perfectly fine. Oh, well, you're very kind. Have you ever had to make a major life decision that contributed to the life that you have now? Absolutely. Um, I decided to have a kid. That, that was a big, a big decision. I also decided to continue living. Um, that was a big decision. And looking back on it, if I had not failed at that, um, I wouldn't have my kid. Which is very odd. Like, having your own, like, mini people, like, mini, mini person. I was going to try and say person, and then I wanted to say kid, so that's how that happened. Uh, your own mini, like, your little minion. You have a little minion. Like, he's a turd, but he's pretty cool and very caring. And, like, see, like if, I, if I had decided to take myself off of this earth, I wouldn't have, like, a tiny human that calls me mom, which is very weird to me. Like, I don't know who's, what in my brain was like, yeah, let's have a kid. Um, that's, that is very interesting. And there's a lot of things in the creative realm that wouldn't be happening right now if I, you know, took myself off the planet. Um, that might have been more, that's probably the biggest decision that changed because my son wouldn't be here if that decision hadn't been made or had been made. Depending on how you gander at that. Do you have any major life regrets? No, I don't think I do. Which is very interesting. Like, if you had asked me that same question a year and a half to two years ago, my answer would have been different. But... 
if I regretted anything, then I wouldn't be where I am now. Like it's everything happens for a reason, and coming to terms with that that was that was a messy situation, but and it's still messy. What's your proudest moment? Is there something that you want to accomplish before you die? Um, I have a laundry list of things that I would like to accomplish. Knowing that no matter what life throws at you, I want to make sure that my kid knows that he can do whatever he sets his mind to. He can follow his dreams. He doesn't have to be chained to a nine to five to make ends meet. There are better ways of doing that. Like, the norm is not necessarily the healthiest way to go. Like, yeah, I mean, for some people, some people prefer being told you have to do this, 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 and this. But that's not, that's toxic within itself. Like, especially for creatives. That is a spiral waiting to happen. And viewing the regular way to live as the only way that's What is your happiest memory? My happiest memory. I don't know if I have one particular memory that is like just one. I have a conglomerate. Usually my happiest memories are when I am surrounded by my people, like people that I can just be around that I don't have to have a facade on for, I don't have to be a particular way or walk on eggshells because God forbid I hurt your feelings, like people that I can speak freely around and not have to worry about oh no, did I just say something that's going to make you sad? Like, mm -mm, that's... Being around my people is probably... Just... And dancing. Definitely dancing. It's always a good time to dance. Are you enjoying your experience? Right now. Like in this exact moment or in life in yeah, general? Yeah, doing, doing this. Um, it's out of my comfort zone, which I'm learning to enjoy being out of my comfort zone because, you know, that's how growth happens. So, um, overall, I, I'm 
not not enjoying it. Like, I mean, given the trajectory of my path, I imagine I'm going to have to do more of these. So, um, which will be super fun. I'm not the best at talking about myself. I haven't gathered. I guess that's a lot. What do you think is the meaning of life? 42. Awesome. <laughs> uh, oh, no, okay. oh do, you, do you want not a nerd answer? Because that's... Uh, we can use that. <laughs> like, 42. I haven't, I, hadn't, I haven't hit that yet, so... I don't know. Once I hit that, we'll see what happens. Do you believe in ghosts or the paranormal? And if so, have you ever experienced anything paranormal or unexplainable? I don't know if I believe in ghosts per se, though that would be a really great question. Dang it. Um, complete nerd, sorry. Um, but the paranormal, definitely. And I've had a couple... Uh, encounters of things that are unexplainable. Um, the most prominent one in my brain was a sleep paralysis episode. That was not fun. Would I tend to not recommend. Um, yeah, see, even, even thinking about it, I'm just like, oh, no. But not all of the encounters have been malignant, so there's that. And I also think that we as humans are, I shouldn't say we as humans, in my experience, those that are on the same frequency tend to experience different types of what would be called paranormal situations. So um, I find that when I am when I personally am around more people that are like me, um, certain things pop up. So that's that's fun. They tell you that you can turn it off. That's a lie. You just box yourself in. It's fine. There's one thing that you could do before you die that you haven't already done. What would it be? Just one thing. <laughs> this is <laughs> I have a bucket list um, the thing that popped into my head as this is going to sound super off kelter from the rest of the situation um, so I have this thing that I would like to do at some point in my life. Um, I would love to have sex under a full moon in the woods, like out in nature, um, preferably in the mountains. But if it's in the mountains, it needs to be summertime because I don't do snow. Like I'm not, that's not a thing. Uh, like, I like snow. Snow is pretty. Snow is pretty to look at. Um, outside of that, it can stay where it's at. I have no urge to be naked in the snow. Though I do want to go into a hot tub surrounded by snow at some point in my life. So, that, those don't need to coincide the same time. Because, fuck, you're trying to get me out in the snow naked. Like that. <laughs> I would have to be on drugs or something. Like, that's not a... That's... I'm, I'm too African for the snow. Like, mm -mm. That was not PC at all. My bad. I've been doing pretty good. <laughs> oh, so that's out in the world now. Is there somewhere special that you want to go or see in person? Central Park. I've never been. I've been 
to New York twice now, the city. Um, and I've never been to Central Park. I want to go ice skating in Central Park. As cliche as that is. But also walking through it in the summertime. There's a theme here. I don't, I like the cold sometimes. But I just, I've never walked, I, I've never been to Central Park. I've driven past it. And it looks a lot bigger than I thought it was. Like, oh, it's a good hike. <laughs> but it'll be a day trip. It'll be a good day at some point. I, yeah, at some point. Is there something special that you've always wanted to do, see, or experience? Outside of the last two things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've always wanted to dance in LA, uh, or anywhere where I can throw a rock and there's 10 dancers just waiting to dance. Uh, the most prominent place that I've seen has been LA, but I've never been to that part of California. Um, I hear Miami, you can do that too, but that's a little dicey there, so that's neither here nor there, I don't know, like, like I would go that route, but, um, yeah, just go to a place where I can be surrounded by other dancers and create. What's the most amazing thing that you've ever witnessed? Probably watching my son figure things out, like, without help. But he knows when to ask for help, but it's really cool watching him. Like, I'm, I'm a recovering control freak. So if things aren't done the way that I think that they should be done, I'm just like, ah, you know, maybe change how you do it. But a kid will change that for you. Um, and I, I've had to take a step back a little bit to let him discover things the way that he's going to discover things. And, like, he'll do things, and you can see the little wheels turning, and you've been able to see it since he came out. Like, at six months, he was trying the whole sleight of hand of, hey, if I do this, they're going to get distracted by this, and so I can go back and do the thing that they told me not to do. At six months old. So, uh, my kid's intelligent. Which is good going to be great when he's older. But yeah, watching him learn things and do things and be independent as much as sometimes it is frustrating. That's that's pretty cool and amazing to watch. He's like a little alien. Like, figuring things out. Pretty cool. If you could give a message to future generations, what would it be? be you. You're going to know yourself better than anyone, despite what people tell you. Like, how you do things, your internal spirit is going to know what's good and what's not. You have those warning bells for a reason. And if you're doing something that you know deep down you're not supposed to be doing, like, for example, if you're supposed to be creating and you're an accountant, like, that's the quickest way to spiral, doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, and know your morals, like, know your moral compass, and everybody's moral compass is going to be different, like, and that's okay, that's okay, like, you don't all have to do the same thing, that's Sorry, that was, it's okay to be different. It is okay. If someone is not your cup of tea, that is okay. Like, you don't have to try and conform to their tea bag. Like, you have your own tea bag for a reason. Find people that have similar tea bags as you. You guys will steep the same. It's just an opinion. I'm sorry, but apparently I'm a lot more passionate about that than I thought. Ugh. Learn it before you're in your 20s, ideally. 
your parents are supposed to be teaching you that, but that's a whole different... Our generation is fucked. So we, we were waiting until our 30s to figure out all the cracks in our foundation. That's... That's a good point. But it's our fault that we're the way that we are. Because we raised ourselves. So... Hopefully it didn't get any easier in the future. Oh, I hope so. What do you think life will be like in 500 years? <laughs> oh yeah, it's a loaded question after that last one. <laughs> uh, well, you know, part of me is hoping that, you know, we just start over. Like, kill them all, let God sort them out. That's... That was that was not nice, but whatever. Like I, I think that the Earth is going to be fine. I'm not sure about humanity. I'm like it's we're too soft. We're bored. We're bored. We've been given everything, and so now we're just like, well, we don't have to work for anything. So what are we going to do for fun? Oh, let's just create. <laughs> Diversity. That's, that's, oh my god, that's obnoxious, but, like, there are more, <laughs> that's a whole can of worms right there, and I, I don't, I'm not convinced that either one of us have the time for that conversation at this point in time, because, like, just be who you're supposed to be and let other people be who they're supposed to be. Like, stop trying to conform people to... Like, that is that is why the decline is happening now, because people are trying to conform other people to do what they're doing, and just find people that want to do what you're doing, and just be with those people. <laughs> like, it's not that fucking hard. I... Just... That's... that's you're absolutely fine. So, in 500 years, I'm not sure humanity will be around. Maybe the dinosaurs will be back. That would be good. <laughs> I don't know if it works that quick, but... <laughs> you never know. I mean, we still have the Komodo dragon. Well, that and, you know, if Hollywood's taught us anything, Jurassic Park, you know? I didn't say that we still had to be here. I just said that the dinosaurs could come back. <laughs> well, yeah, we make the dinosaurs, and then the dinosaurs eat us. It's just a whole cycle. Yeah, it's a cycle, circle of life. Exactly. There. Speaking of life, oh. do you believe in extraterrestrial life? Uh, I'm told that there's proof of aliens. I mean, I don't not believe in them. I feel like if they came down here, they would assimilate and be like, we're just going to take it over from the inside out. Maybe that's how we <laughs> disappear. And the aliens bring back the dinosaurs. Who knows? Like, I just... I... I don't... A theory just popped into my head, but there's there's no time for that either. I, that's... It's a frequencies thing. It's a frequency. I still have to do more research before I start spouting out things. Sorry. Who's your favorite historical figure and why? historical figure in why. Hmm. The main one that keeps popping into my head, which makes me really sad that he's technically a historical figure now, would be Robin Williams. Yeah. That is very sad that he is. History. He kind of shaped my childhood for a decent amount of it. Um, all the positive parts, anyway. Um, and he was a lot more down to earth than his comedy side. Like, a lot of people just know him for his funny, ha-ha, child-appropriate comedy. Like, some of his stand-up is <laughs> not child-appropriate. Um, but it's 
it's real. Like, it's... He brought up real situations and made it funny. Like, ah, there it is. He taught us how to laugh at our trauma. Huh. I'm learning a lot during this. Holy smokes. Yeah, I bet. And he also advocated that it was okay to be different. What's the first film you can remember watching? first film I can remember watching. I think this is a lot of <laughs> But I didn't know what was going on in it. Like, I was, uh, like, yeah, I think The Sandlot is the first one I remember watching. And then the first, I know, I remember the first one that I ever cried at. Um, and I think I was like five or six. It's a movie called Jason's Lyric. And the main girl ended up getting shot and I went out of the room crying. Um, she survived. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, and like my mom and my sister had killed me back into the room like, no, she's okay. Like, she survived. It's okay. Like, oh. So I've been emotional for most of my life. That's good to know. What's the first song you can remember hearing? Probably Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or some shit. <laughs> like... Yeah, we weren't allowed to watch Barney when I was growing up. Just kind of how Coco Melon is now. Crack for children. Yeah, so probably like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or something like that, or the ABCs or something like that. Okay. I find it interesting that the things that I remember revolve around people, but the things that I don't revolve around creativity. Hmm. Interesting. All right, well, you've been doing great so far, so we're going to wrap this up with a little word association. Oh, no. Okay. Let's do it. You ready? <laughs> nope, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> okay, just the first thing that pops into your head. <laughs> oh, okay. Bye. What? <laughs> Want. Need. Wish. Why. Take. Give. Sky. Blue. <laughs> Dance, I guess. That's mm -mm. <laughs> Dance in the ring. Okay. Run. Walk. Fun. Yes. Win. Why? Lose. K is what popped into my head, which is very odd.
depression. Dinner. Food. Street. Lights. Smile. Yes. Inside. Outside. Complete. Those are all my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's been an uncomfortably delightful situation. <laughs> Experience, I guess I should say. I have a lot of things to unpack, though. Mm. <laughs> you did great. Oh, you're very kind. 